GM. Well, hi everyone, and welcome to another stream. Uh, we're trying to do something different every day this week. I say we, and that means basically me, so I don't know why I said we. I mean I, me, me, me. I don't know. What did we say? So um, what we're going to do today is have a lesson with my friend um, Bjorn of Norway. And Bjorn, you might have seen these before. Some of the lessons are on my YouTube channel, and we will put this lesson up on my YouTube channel as well. And Bjorn is, is a very talented player. Um, I guess rating-wise is about 1600 ELO, so probably a similar rating to a lot of people who are watching this stream. And the idea is to improve his play. And um, Bjorn very kindly plays a lot of the openings I, I suggest and I sell in the Ginger GM shop. So he plays the Black Lion. He, he started to play the Jabava London system. And that's what we're going to concentrate on today. So if you have purchased the Jabava London system or you think about purchasing it, this lesson could be quite useful. We haven't had much time to prepare much. So we're going to start by looking at one of Bjorn's games that he's played in it. And then I'm going to have any questions that he wants to ask me about it and maybe take some questions from you guys as well. So um, it's quite nice. I can see at the top there. I'd like to keep that on the stream right at the top. You see the last subscriber to this channel is the current US champion. So I, I like to just point that out, you know, at the top, Hikaru, even Hikaru learns something from the Ginger GM. So if, he, if it's good enough for Hikaru, it's good enough for you. Get yourself subscribed. Hello to everyone in the chat. So massive hello to the regulars, Jobius. Hello there, mate. Um, Push the Pawns, Pizza Racer. Um, uh, everyone who, who's come in, hello to all you guys. And obviously it's a bit of a funny time of day, so we might not have a massive crowd today, but it doesn't matter. Um, this is a stream for everyone and hopefully you'll learn something. So what we're gonna do now is um, give Bjorn a ring, give him a bell, get him on a line, and it'll take me a second or two to get him set up in space. Um, and I think Bjorn has a special surprise for us, but I was just thinking, I don't know how I'm gonna get it to work, but we'll get the show rocking and rolling very soon. So let's give the main man a bell, a dog and bone on the phone. We're gonna give him a dog and bone, get him on the phone. So let's do it. Um, okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. So we'll give him, we'll see if this works. Okay. Da, 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 da. Bjorn, hello mate. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so Bjorn, um, I'll let you chat for a second while I get your camera set up. I hope I can get the green screen to work. It looks so uh, much more professional than mine, but I, I will, <laughs> I'll let you, I'll let you do the chatting and everyone in the chat, can you let me know what the sound levels are like? Cause I can change them here if I'm too loud or if Bjorn's too loud. So let's get the main man, Bjorn, right. into space. <laughs> oh, I hope this works. I spent a lot of money on this, so. <laughs> we get it to not, work. We will get it to really. work, Bjorn, somehow. We'll get it to work. I, I see the chat is um, is onto a secret, Simon, that you didn't uh, catch up on yesterday. It was actually me who gifted the subscription to uh, ah, to Hikaru. <laughs> oh, it was you. Ah, oh, Bjorn, you're so kind. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, there, there I was thought me. it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there was me, uh, you know, going on going on about how good it was and it was you it was you Bjorn all along so I'll let you He's off you're still though. subscribing yes yeah. uh, I mean and you had yeah yeah if you felt good for a while it's still worth it I right? did I did I yeah. felt good for a while <laughs> okay well of course Skype is... now as he is a subscriber he probably get all the messages that you're online he, he'll be on, on all the time that's my, my perfect guess. <laughs> and <laughs> Okay, so I'm just setting this up. You can see Bjorn has a green screen. So can I get this to work? So Bjorn is in space. So uh, so Bjorn, um, while, while I set things up, um, you did come over and play a tournament, which we haven't really discussed, and explain to everyone where, where, where I met you in person recently. Yeah, so that was over in uh, Crazy Benratti in Ireland. Uh, I think you talked about Benratti in one of your shows. And I was like, um, yeah, this sounds like the tournament for me. Uh, I got a couple of my friends uh, to, to come with me. And um, 
Yeah, we did a weekend trip. We flew in on Thursday and we left on uh, Monday, Monday morning. And it was just it was just amazing. It was a perfect tournament for for uh, any social chess player, I would say. Um, you know, there's, there's a bar next to the playing area. You can, while you're having a game, you can go buy yourself a beer and uh, sit down, enjoy your beer. And uh, uh, even if you're in a horrible position, you still have a beer. So, yeah, <laughs> e- even if you're playing an eight-year-old, you're, you can still drink, <laughs> which is, for us Norwegians, is just amazing. <laughs> Perfect. So, And then there's, like, heaps of grandmasters and talented players uh, you were there and uh, david howell was there i guess he was the best player there um thanks bjorn yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes I, I agree um i mean david david how i was just um very exciting news david Howe has just become british number one on rating he's overtaken um mickey adams and i i, I will let it slip now that I, david how is a good friend of mine has has agreed to um basically do a course for ginger gm we've released this new thing on ginger gm where we're getting good players to do courses and david howe his course is going to be one of the best things ever sold on the internet chess wise because he's going to do he's yeah. going to do a 15 hour course bjorn and the oh, yeah. fifth and the 15 hour course bjorn is going to be on how he became england number one because he's never had a coach so he's going to actually give us all the secrets so i'm going to learn something so it sounds cool yeah <laughs> so um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> A but it was just, uh, I, I recommend this tournament next year for everyone. I'm going back for sure. And just to hang out at the original uh, Dirty Nelly and, uh, at night and talking to all these uh, great chess players and discussing chess all night was just so much fun. Um, yeah, one of my highlights, uh, Simon, I don't know if you noticed this, but after one of my, my games, uh, I played the black line and I had the score sheet with me. Yeah. And I was like, uh, who wants to see like a perfect black line? <laughs> and David Howell takes it. And it kind of skims through and goes, oh, move, move 35. Oh, knight take to h2. Nice move. Yeah, oh, good game. <laughs> and to us mortal players, this is just, I've never seen that. <laughs> so you can just read through a game like that. It's just amazing. <laughs> I have to say, David is especially gifted. And, you know, I think Grandmasters, if you give them the record of the game, so I can sort of show you because we're going to have a look at Bjorn's game. Can we see this? This is the record. This is what a game record looks like. Uh, generally and we, we're going to be looking at this game later on good players can read the game in their mind and they can say oh move 23 you could have played this and that and stuff like this and that's something that david howe can do and this is a good way to actually improve your own chess if you can read stuff like that yeah. it improves your visualization but it, 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 right, it's, yeah. it's very uh um it's it's very tough to do yeah so um it's very tough and uh yeah i just yeah. struggle i still struggle when when people like are talking in this uh, chess syntax way of like oh g4 g4 oh g oh that's g4 <laughs> it's, it takes a while so, to get yeah. used to doesn't it so yeah 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 so i hope i hope by the way now now we're, we're cracking off i hope the sound levels are good bjorn you look fantastic in space can you see yourself oh, look at that thank you. look at that <laughs> we're both floating in space this is brilliant i, I love it well done for getting a green screen this this is yeah, this yeah. is working you, this is like you're a pro you actually look better than me which i'm a little bit worried about but you know um we'll, we'll let that slide for now so um <laughs> but good stuff so um so yeah we're gonna have a lot of fun so bun ratty is this tournament in ireland as bjorn said i've been playing there for i don't know like 20 years i go every year bjorn and some friends flew did you fly to england first from norway bjorn yeah we flew, uh, flew to london and then straight from there to uh, to shannon is it shannon shannon Airport. yeah shannon. yeah, yeah. And, and Bandrati is this really small place. Uh, it's close to cities, uh, Shannon and Limerick. Uh, but there's no there's no reason to go into the cities because there's so much fun happening at the hotel that you stay at usually. So. Yeah, it's true. I mean, the hotel we stay at, they've got a bar, important. They've got a spa, if you like that kind of thing. Did you get to the spa, Bjorn? Oh, no. Never no. had time. No. <laughs> too, too much drinking was going on. Too much that. drinking, yeah. <laughs> and um, as well as as well as this, they got the one of the oldest pubs in Ireland next to the hotel, Dirty Nelly's, which is fantastic, by the castle there. And all the chess players go there, some locals, and you play Blitz in the pub. And, and it's just great atmosphere. You know, there's lots of partying going on. And if you want a fun tournament, make sure you, you go to it. So um, it's it's near it's, Limerick. It's in the county of Clare, I think. Uh, but I'm not I'm not sure about that. Porn to be wild. Uh, yeah. But it, it's right by the airport, um, Shannon Airport. So it's all good. 
So good. So I guess what I have to do, Bjorn, I have to share my screen. Is that right? We do this before. Is that, is that how we're going to get this show on the uh, road? Yeah, yeah. I think Let's so, do yeah. that. Let's share the screen. So um, I'm going to be... Uh, da, da, da. Are you not sharing? Oh, no. We're going to do this one. Okay. So let me know when you can see the screen, yep. Bjorn. I see it. Yep. Okay, perfect. So... Um, so what we're going to do today, everyone at home, um, we're going to do a couple of things. Now, um, I was just saying, Bjorn, before we got you on, how you play a lot of the openings that we've made DVDs about. Is is that correct? So what openings? What openings do you play? Tell us your repertoire. Uh, Black Line and London System is my repertoire. <laughs> there we go. So, yeah. uh... <laughs> and now I switch from the classical London System to the to Jibava London System, which I I really enjoy so far. Yeah. Good. So that's good to hear. Um, so I did a line, I did a, a DVD on the Black Line for Chess Base, and I did a recent one, the Jabava London System, with my friend Blair, which um, obviously Bjorn's taken up. And um, yeah, we... and I must say I bought a, um, a lot of your DVDs, and and the Jabava London System is probably the best because it's it's not it's not only. Uh, um, teaching is it's a lot of entertainment when you have Blair on <laughs> so it's, it's in- more like your streams I would say it's a little bit of fun as, as long as you're uh, by the way uh, when you're doing the teaching so it's, it's I mean if you don't know Blair um, the stream tomorrow for those of you who, who want a bit of chaos um, <laughs> and it is bloody chaos I mean like you know we like doing different things stream wise and tomorrow is our Friday chaotic stream with Blair and me and Blair We'll be having a beer or two and streaming uh, tomorrow, so so that that should be that should be fun. Um, and this DVD has Blair as a co-presenter. Um, I mean, what we try to do with Ginger Jim, mainly when you buy a DVD from us, the main idea is to try to teach you. So they take a lot of time to prepare the material, and I want you to learn something. But occasionally we try to mix it up and have a bit of entertainment in there as well. So you know it's not too dry. So we might we might we might try having a bit more entertainment in future, Bjorn, I think. You reckon that'll work? Like a bit more of a yeah, a bit yeah. more of a laugh, you know? So yes. Blair has an anarchy uh, oh God, I can't say that word. Um like anarchy. Anarchy charm. I'll just say anarchy. I'm being dyslexic, some some words just anarchy struggle. But he charm. does. Uh-huh. I like that. That's a great way of s- describing him. Yeah. <laughs> Blair was the first guy I met in uh, in Bunrati, and I, I never met the guy before. Uh, and we're kind of trying to check in, and this extremely drunk guy is sitting and playing Bug House with uh, uh, Adam Hunt, I think, and a couple of other guys. And he's like, Bjorn, it's you, Bjorn. Come over here. I need you on my team. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds and like since, Blair. Since then, we were friends. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that certainly does sound like Blair. <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> no doubt about it. I mean... Blair's, Blair's a you know, very in, in, interesting individual, um, a great guy, great friend of mine, and uh, you know he's, he's he's one of a kind, and he's a good chess player, twenty three hundred as well. So he's yeah, uh, he's good. Yeah. So okay, so we got more people in the chat now, and like I say, the aim of this is to we're going to concentrate on we're going to start by taking a look at a game that Bjorn actually played. So um, where did you play this game, Bjorn? Uh, so this is uh, I'm start I've started playing a um, like a local club championship in Fredrikstad, uh, which is every Thursday, um, and they also have an open class, so anybody in the area can drop drop by any Thursday and get a, a long uh, game. Um, so it, I think it's uh, eleven rounds, uh, and this was round seven, I think. It's now getting uh, he- it's getting heated up in the in the top there. Yeah. Okay. So this is this is and what's the time limit for this game then? So this is not a blitz game. It's um. It's no, no. Time it's, limit? Yeah. It's uh. What is it? Nine. I think ninety minutes and then fifth. Or it, it might be thirty seconds per move. Okay. So Fifteen or thirty seconds per move and then ninety minutes. So, okay. Yeah. So you got a long time to play this game. So yeah. This is one thing I I would like to say to everyone watching this. I mean, playing blitz is great fun. You see me playing Blitz. I'm sure you guys play quick chess at home. But if you really want to improve at your chess, you have to play longer time limits because it it will force yourself to think in a different way than you think in Blitz. Blitz is good fun, but yeah. I don't think it's very good for your normal chess. I say normal chess, competition, time limit chess. And it's good to play longer time limits because you get to develop your chess in a better way. So the game we're looking at here is a game Bjorn played in the Jabava London system with the white pieces and it was at a longer time limit. So the time limit was a time limit where 
Bjorn, you could think for 20 minutes on a move if you needed yeah. to. Yep. So uh, he could really and spend his time. <laughs> and, he, and Bjorn did. Okay, great. <laughs> and how strong, how, how strong was your opponent? So we're just going to set the background. So Bjorn had the white pieces. How strong was your opponent I here? I think it's like 15-50. 15-50. Okay. Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay, good. Well, let, let's have a look at the game then. So um, Bjorn started with d4. And now Bjorn's opponent played d5. Mm -hmm. And the Jabava London system is knight to c3 here. And I would say stage one of the Jabava London system is d4, knight to c3, bishop to f4. Now, before we go on, the difference between this system and the London system is in the London system, you put a pawn on c3. So you often go bishop f4 first, and then later on, after some normal developing moves like this, you put your pawn on c3. Mm -hmm. So this is the standard London system. Now, this means that your pawn on d4 is better defended, but it also means your knight on b1 is quite passive. So this is the first thing to bear in mind. So Bjorn played knight c3, and now his opponent played the main move, developing his knight, knight to f6, and now bishop to f4. So this is like the start, Bjorn, of the London system, the Jabbar yeah, London yeah. system, yeah? Yep. So, good, good. And now black played pawn to e6, which is one of the main moves. And this kind of setup is played by many people um, who want to get a classical queen's gambit setup. And Bjorn, you now played simply e3 here. Yep. And the next stage is to try to develop these guys normally. And the first question I ask you, Bjorn, which I'm sure you know the answer to, if your opponent now plays the move c5, which a lot of people play, but I already consider this to be a mistake. Um, yeah. What would you play now, Bjorn? So this is when you play uh, um, knight b5. Knight b5, and totally correct. So this is one of the first things you learn in Jabava London system. The knight on b5 is, is really annoying for black. Um, it threatens to come into c7 with check, and after knight to a6, what would you play now, Bjorn? So what, what, what are your next couple of moves maybe here? Tell, tell me your next move here. This yeah, is the only uh, way, by the way, to stop knight c7. Yeah, exactly. And I, 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 it's good that you, <laughs> we talked about this line because I, I have a question about this line. Um, okay, good. But okay, so I think the main move here is uh, a4. Okay, a4. And, uh, and that stabilizes the knight. I mean, it, it, it doesn't really matter how you play it, but I, I didn't... You, yeah, sorry, Bjorn, go on. Yeah, so, sorry, and... I, and I was uh, I've been thinking about this uh, sometimes, and I think the other thing is that you can actually go just retreat the knight and claim that his knight is uh, in a in a worse position there, and you can even take the knight off and double his pawn and the file sometimes. But well, I I, I, I would disagree with the second thing there. Okay. Um, with knight b5, and the rule is when they have a pawn on c5, you want to keep your knight on b5. Okay, when the pawn is back on c7, it's different. Uh -huh. Right, so, exactly. So after knight b5, because that knight is trying to come into c7, mm -hmm. you basically force knight a6. And now the reason... So now it can be forced away. Okay, yeah. So the reason I play a4 and c3 is just to consolidate the queen side. So you can play c3 first, it doesn't really matter. And let's okay, play yeah. another normal move for black, like bishop e7. And now we play a4. And now the reason, Bjorn, I don't move the knight away from b5 is it's fantastically placed on b5 here. Yeah. So this one knight, combined with this bishop, controls the knight on a6 and the rook on a8, as, as yeah. we've talked about in the DVD. For example, the knight can't move on a6 because you go knight c7, and the rook can't move because you take the pawn on a7. So this exactly. knight is such a good piece. So I think the line you're thinking. Well, uh, I, yeah. I think I think I would take the rook on b8 instead of taking the pawn. But <laughs> if the rook moves to b8, have the rook. Have the, you, you're a bit greedy, Bjorn, aren't you? But yeah, yeah, you, I know. I know. You're a little, a little bit greedy there. So. But uh, can I ask a question about this position? Sure, sure. Because I I know this. Uh, obviously, the knight is great there, and and what I usually face in this situation is that black sees that oh that knight is really annoying and I can't move my pieces so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna play bishop d7 and take the knight off sure this is this is a very sensible idea black wants to get rid of this very good knight so let's simply develop like knight f3 we want to get these guys out and let's say blacks at some point takes here maybe he castles first it, it doesn't make much difference 
Now, my automatic reaction here would be to improve my pawn structure and open my rook. In some cases, like here, bishop takes might be a good option because it's check. So, but the positional decision I would play would be pawn takes. And okay. now the knight has to go back to c7. Uh -huh. yeah. And okay, so black's got rid of his, his your good knight, but you've changed one positional advantage to another here because you've got the two bishops. You've got a bit of play along here. Uh, especially against a7. Your mm -hmm. queen can come over to a4 very nicely, and you have a very good square for your knight on e5. So I would consider... I mean, it's not a winning position, of course. Um, it's just a very slightly better position for for white. I mean, white has a nice advantage because of these small things. I'm just wondering if there's a tactic with b6 and bishop takes c7 yeah. here. I don't know. Does that work? Um, rook takes a1. I don't think it does work quite... So it's a kind of tactic we should look out yeah, for. But, yeah, exactly. Um, but I think in, in this position... Would so you what you're saying is actually yeah. interesting because you're saying that you said you want to improve your pawn structure by doubling your pawns, which we mortals learn that that's never a good idea, or often not a good idea. It's it, In some cases, doubling your pawns can be very good. And this is one example, actually, and uh, I'll, I'll give you a couple more examples in a second, as long as it achieves something. And the reason this is good is the pawn here is quite annoying for black. I mean, yeah. if black ever tries to go a6, you can always go b6 or take that one. So it kind of cramps black. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, when you double your pawns, you have to remember you do open up lines. And doubling your pawns to open up lines can be very effective. I mean, this is a very typical idea in the London system to double your A-pawn. Let, let me just show mm -hmm. you another line very quickly. I mean, one very famous line in the traditional London system, not the Jabava London system, is a line along this kind of way of playing with queen b6, queen b3. And now black takes on b3 and you take here. And this is, again, another example of white doubling the b pawns but this this is better having a pawn on b3 than rather on a2 because you mm. open the a file and actually these pawns are quite nice they they, mm. they they give a bit more control it's better having double pawns here because they're all they're all snug together so double pawns are okay but you've got to assess each position like individually i would say really so mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah um i mean if we go back to this a4 thing i mean yeah i mean any questions you've got please do throw them at me yeah, no, that was uh, that was the main uh, question because that's usually what my uh, um, the opponent does here in this situation is like they need to they need to get rid of that knight, and it makes sense because it is really strong as as you said it, it holds up two pieces basically. Yeah, uh, you can never move the rook. Yeah, uh, you can't get it out. That's right. I mean, of course, this position is not winning for white, but when you're trying to play any any opening, you're just trying to get an advantage, especially <clears> with white. And the more and and the thing is, these are the, what Bjorn's talking about here are really middle game plans. And one of the key things I'd say to anyone who wants to become a better chess player is to know the ideas and what exchanges and and differences help you. So if you know that pawn takes helps you, and you keep learning little things like this, your your understanding of the opening will just get better and better. So that that's that's the way to get better in general. Um, I mean, one thing I would say you were you were saying the other idea is to move the knight back. Um, yeah, that and. and I think the point is, Bjorn, you might be getting this now a little bit confused with, let me just show you another line. And the line you might be getting confused with is after e3, let's say bishop e7, mm -hmm. a line that Jabava actually played, which I don't give as the main recommendation in the DVD, is knight to b5. Right. And this forces knight to a6. And now at some point later on, your knight comes back here. But only because, because now the knight, yeah, it's not stable there now. So it's not stable. I mean, I wouldn't mm. move the knight until it's attacked because there's no okay. point. I mean, why why move the knight back? It's on quite an active square. I mean, I'd play something like knight to f3, mm -hmm. and when c6 is played, only now the difference, of course, with the last positions is the pawn is not on c5. Only mm -hmm. now do you move the knight back, and the reason white does this maneuver is white is saying, okay, I've lost time with my knight but I put your knight on a bad square. It can't go to here quickly anymore. But I wouldn't worry about that. I mean, the general yeah, yeah. rule, the general rule I'd say, Bjorn, is if you ever get your knight to b5, keep it on that square until you have to move it backwards. I think mm, that's the yeah. simple way okay. to look at it, really. Right. Um, okay, well, should, we, should we move on with the game? 
Yeah, sure. Okay, so in this position, um, Bjorn's opponent played a good move. Bjorn's opponent played pawn to a6. So I think it's a decent move, at least, because it stops any idea with this. Um, I mean, what were your thoughts about this? You've probably seen this kind of idea before, Bjorn, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is um, it's always a little bit annoying when they mo do this because it takes away... <laughs> It, it does the yeah. first trap they can fall into basically it's <laughs> you're always you're always hoping for them to go wrong early but it, it's always lovely when traps work isn't it you know yeah <laughs> it's great when when a plan comes together but you you're you're right in in this position a6 does stop this but if we think of it from a positive point of view we can think that black's played this a6 move which is a bit of a waste of time it's, it's quite slow it's quite slow and we've developed a piece in the meantime so it's it's sort of a we we can't fear it. It's not a worrying move anyway. Um, so Bjorn, so have I'll you... tell you what yes. I'll tell you what I was thinking here. Because yeah, um, sure. uh, basically, you need to watch the, uh, any material several times when you're when you're older than ten, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Because I can't remember anything, and I remember like in one chapter there was something about where Black plays a little bit um, slow, like this. And there was this G4 move right away to kind of just just attack, and that's what I wanted to play. Yeah. Uh, and I couldn't remember should I just play it right away? And then I looked at Bishop B4, and I got a little bit annoyed by Bishop B4. And when I push G4 G5, the knight coming into um, E4 okay. it felt felt annoying to me. Um, okay. Yeah, I I see what you're saying. I mean, uh, this. Is I mean I I'll be honest I can't remember all the lines on the DVD <laughs> yeah, exactly. and I, I I say this about any opening and I, I mean as you get older I mean like you say when you're over over the age of ten you know no human being unless you're Magnus Carlsen can remember every variation in the opening it's impossible mm -hmm. so what Bjorn has said there is quite important and what you know the DVDs we make and I think the way that you should all learn is not the individual moves but the ideas. So at least be honest, remembering one idea is to push the G-pawn here. Um, so it, it is whenever you're learning anything, try to remember the ideas behind your opening. And what Bjorn has said is if you go G4 straight away, trying to push that knight away, quite an aggressive and interesting way to play. Bjorn was worried about bishop B4, which looks like a, an interesting idea, pinning the knight. And then if we go G5, the knight has a very nasty square on e4, and black does get a lot of pressure against this. And I, 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 I wouldn't. I agree with you, Bjorn. This is a bit unpleasant because the knight is also attacking g5. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there are two things. You could either after g4, you could either now and bishop b4. We could either try to stop the knight coming here. I wouldn't go g5. No. Um, so we could try maybe like f3. It's not a stupid move controlling that square. I mean, mm -hmm. this this is like one way worth considering of playing. And then we can try to go G5. Um, another move, yeah, I mean, maybe F3 is the best way if you want to play this. But I think you might be right. Maybe G4 is a little bit premature here. Um, I mean, I'm not... You played A3 to go for this G4, G5 idea. Yep. I'm not sure about A3. If I was playing white here, I think my first thought here would be just to try to develop my pieces maybe. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, this is a good system that Black's played. And again, yeah. I, I, I'm trying to think what the theory recommends here. And I, I, I'll be honest, I can't remember, but, yeah. <laughs> which is the same with me. But I'm just thinking logically. Um, let's say we go bishop d3. I mean, when c5 happens now, one thing you generally have to do, you, you have to take on, on c5 and, yeah. and play this position. And the point about this position is that you complete your development with white. So we go knight to f3. Now we have four pieces developed. Black mm -hmm. only has two. On the other hand, black has a pretty decent center. Mm -hmm. So the idea of playing this way, and I think I'm remembering okay, because I'm remembering the ideas, not the actual moves, is let's say black castles. We complete our development, and let's say knight c6. And I think there's an important move that white needs to play here in this position. 
to try and gain some kind of initiative. And can you can you remember what the important Bjorn? I'm just going to use the toilet very quickly. I had too too much <laughs> green tea, um, and uh, the green. Tea, so you probably didn't need to know that at home, but it'll give you a chance, Bjorn, to, to work out and everyone at home what White's yeah, move is uh, as well here. So I'll, I'll be very quickly, very quick anyway. Yeah, maybe I'll uh, have some su suggestions from the chat. I uh, say I see a question uh, uh, if I play at Stern and I. I have played at Stern for four years, uh, but I moved to Fredrikstad now. But I occasionally go back uh, to Oslo and play at Stern. I was there for a marathon blitz tournament uh, last last Sunday, actually playing fifty blitz fifty blitz games. Uh, but okay, so the move here. Mm. Bishop g5 looks interesting. Doesn't feel right. Can't really remember what to do here, but. Bishop g5 looks a little bit annoying for black though. I haven't really. I've talked to the chat instead of uh, figuring out your move. <laughs> okay, right. No, I'm just I'm considering Bishop G5. I just to look. Um, I don't know, but it okay. doesn't really. It seems a little bit annoying, at least for Black. But okay, well, I'm. I. I. This is quite an important moment because this is another rule we got to learn about the Jabava London system and. Uh, People won't need to buy the DVD after this, Bjorn. That's what I'm worried yeah. about. We're going to give <laughs> exactly. such a bloody good lesson. The, the, all these all these freeloaders watching it, I don't need to buy the DVD. You know, Bjorn's <laughs> such a good lesson coach. We don't need to do that. But Come up with a um, better, better yeah. system in this. Uh... <laughs> That's it. Uh, well, the important move now, and um, well done to Mary Hatman and Patrick in the chat. The important move to play now is you've got to, you, you've got to do something against Black Strong Center. And... You can't. I wouldn't want to play around this with the pieces. I mean, if you go bishop g5, so what? I can even break the pin, bishop yeah, yeah, b7. Yeah. I, I mean, exactly. you need to do something in the center. And your main move here is the move e4. And right. you can either play it now, or you could even maybe try to go queen e2 first and, you know, connect your rooks and go e4. Mm -hmm. But you need to do a pawn break here. And in the DVD, I'm pretty sure that e4 is a recommended move. Okay. And the point of this is, if we think about this position logically, um, who's? I'm going to ask you this, Bjorn. Um, so who's got a who's got a problem piece here? I mean, if we look at the knights and bishops, who's who's got good pieces? Look at them each at a time, and who's got and which yeah. is a bad piece? Thank you for subscribing, steak and ale pie. I do love a good steak and ale pie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have that no, in Norway, it's... Bjorn? Do you have steak and ale pies? No. No, it's an English thing. I thought pub pub food. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm yeah. sure we do, but uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Pro probably do. So wh which is Black's problem? Let's say Black. What's his problem piece, Bjorn? Yeah, the bishop and c8 is obviously the one not participating, and and all the minor pieces for for white are are out and uh, in the open. So, um, totally yeah. correct. Yeah, I mean this bishop on c8 is often the problem that Black has in the Jabava London system. This is one of the key problems your opponent will face. And when you're mm -hmm. trying to learn anything, you've got to think along two wavelengths. You've got to think, what are my good pieces, but what are my opponent's problem pieces? And there was a lovely game where Magnus Carlsen played the London system, and he swapped everything off except for the bishop on CA. Yeah. <laughs> and this bishop is really bad because it's dead. Our yep. bishop, on the other hand, is outside. You know, the, the counterpart is outside. So playing a move like E4, Bjorn, Let's say we have mass exchanges here. Okay, the queens come off. This is life. Right. And yep. but in this position here, white must be better because mm -hmm. how does black develop this bishop? And we 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 have better pieces. We can mm -hmm. you know it, it's okay. It's not a win, but white is better, and that's all we want from the opening. So yep. I mean I don't know any questions there, Bjorn. Do butt in because I talk a lot, as people know. Do do, <laughs> do say Simon, shut up, man. I need to ask you something. So I don't know. What do you reckon? You're not Blair, so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it was just one thing that kind of hits me. It, it's always these pawn breaks that I, I miss to find. Right. And it's always the pawn breaks that my opponent make that I are not prepared for. 
And I don't know why that is. I'm, I'm curious if there's more people who have the same problem. But uh, there's something about pawn moves that kind of changes the structure so much. So it seems too complicated. <laughs> so I don't want to move them, maybe, because it's, uh, yeah, it's... It's a very, very interesting. Actually, very interesting. You said that, and um, um, what this is so important again, and maybe you've hit a nail on the head that a lot of people have who are watching this as well. If you want to improve your chess, is positional transformations. I think are what pawn breaks do. They they transform one position into another yeah. position, and this goes when we are trying to do it as we we've transformed the position here with e4 and also when our opponent does a pawn move it can transform the position as well and it's really you have to be really aware of, of such ideas um mm. when you're playing and you've always got to look out for pawn breaks and you've got to always look out not just for your own but for your opponents and you've got to work out uh, you know the what will happen when the structure changes if it benefits you or if it benefits your opponent for example here as, as a simple demonstration if we go back to this position black mm -hmm. has a very nice center and yep. by breaking with e4, we get rid of one of his central pawns. And we also here get, you know, we get a good bishop now. Our bishop has a lot more range. And we're swapping off more pieces. As long as we leave our opponent with his bad piece, we can swap off everything else because yeah. that kills I, his rook. So this is why this is a good pawn break to play as such. I, the, th the thing is, I, I think I could see this. But if you go back to the before I make the pawn break. Sure. Yeah, I, I'm struggling to see all the other lines where he plays d4, uh, okay. where he plays maybe. Yeah, I guess d4 is the only yep. only other line here. But yeah, yeah, maybe there's just one other move I need to look at. Yeah, but okay, d4. Mm. I mean, in a game situation, I mean, the rule is, which I know from filming this DVD is that in this line e4 is the move to play so i generally know this is the right idea so i don't if i know that's an idea exactly, yeah. i don't actually need to calculate so much because i can mm -hmm. be a bit lazy but yep. if you didn't know it's the idea you would have to look at pawn takes pawn and you'd have to look at what happens of course if black plays d4 so so let's let's ask you bjorn and we'll get people in the audience try to get you involved with the show as well I, i'll try to keep an eye on as many questions as you can it's obviously we're multitasking here so i might miss a comment but I'm going to ask a load of questions throughout the lesson today. And the question here is, how, what ideas, what do you think White should play here? And there's a couple of ideas I, I can see. Uh, there's one very interesting idea. And uh, E5 is all, uh, obviously interesting. But... I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> yeah, e, E5 counter-attacking and uh, opening your bishop up. This bishop yeah, in yeah. the London system can be such a great attacking piece. It can often yeah. sacrifice itself on h7. So e5 is a good way of thinking, Bjorn. What else are you thinking of, Bjorn? Yeah, well, obviously I need to think about the moving the bishop. Uh, and moving the knights, oh, yeah. Uh, sorry, the, the knight yeah. to e2 or a4 would be what I would be looking at. Yeah. a4 mm, looks like he would go bishop a7 and then the bishop or the knight just feels silly there. Knights uh, on the rim are dim. And you have yeah, to worry and about can, b5. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then it's trapped basically. So yeah. so I think I would rule that out. Okay. And I wouldn't Good go thinking. back to b1, obviously. So e, uh, knight e2 would be the move I would play, I think. Okay. Well, I, f I think you've hit the nail on the head. The two things I'd be thinking of here, and if you weren't sure, let's just go back. If you weren't sure about e4, this is how you should be thinking. You should be, you know, chess is not an easy game. This is why it's a long play game. If you know... If you know how to, um, if you know the ideas, you, you you know if you know what the middle the middle game ideas. When you're watching grandmasters, you might think these guys are geniuses, but in actual fact, we're normal human beings who probably have a lot more experience than you guys, and we know what plans are good and bad. So I know e4 is a good move, so I don't have to calculate it. And the only thing I would I would try to calculate is. Can I play e5? I want to always play the most aggressive move in the position <laughs> first. I just want to. So I'd be looking at that first. I'll calculate it. And if it didn't work, I would go back to knight e2. So I don't know which move I play here. Um, e5 is very interesting. Um, for a start, Bjorn, what would you do? And this go when I say Bjorn, the question goes out to everyone else who's following in the chat. What would you do if Black now, for example, moved the knight back to a passive square, which I think should be a big mistake? Uh, 
there's one move that just springs out here to mind. Yeah. So, yeah. So the Greek gift uh, looks yes. interesting at once, obviously, because they have so many pieces and everything looks lined up correctly. Uh, so bishop takes h7 would be what I would be looking at. Um, and le let's talk us through this then. After bishop takes h7, what is the Greek gift, Bjorn, and how do we do it? So this is one of the tactical patterns that every chess player should know and yeah. this is you know if chess is about patterns if you want to get better you have to memorize your patterns and know these kind of ideas so okay go on Bjorn yeah so then knight g5 uh, which is a check uh, and it also opens the queen so obviously the king um, well should retreat I don't know if he survives here but um, let's say king g8 and then you move the queen in to h5. Boom! Threat threatening mate, and it's quite hard to get away from, I think. Well, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's it's certainly a big attack here. I mean, that, that that is clear, and I wouldn't be surprised that this particular position is just winning for white. Uh, the only move I can see is rook e8, so the king can run away. And, and uh, that's, no, yeah, exactly, but you take on f7 with the queen, maybe? Take on f7 with check, the king comes back. Back. And yeah. we've got to think again. If we're playing a game, we we would not be moving the pieces, and maybe we shouldn't be here. Yeah, but... exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's just leave this position and work out how White wins. Who can get this? White should be winning here. Mm. Yeah, I don't know the answer, but how, how, I mean, I just believe White should be winning. You've also got ideas. If I mean, a rule I have when attacking, and this is a yep. rule well worth remembering. Look at your active pieces. Okay, try to see if they can do anything that creates checkmate or wins material. If they don't, if you can't do anything with your active pieces, my rule is bring in your reinforcements. So then, don't go there, by the way. So these are the <laughs> active pieces. Your reinforcements, which aren't really doing anything, are these three pieces. So if I can't get the queen, knight, or bishop to work, I'll be thinking along the lines of get the other knight to e4, another piece nearer the black king, or maybe one of my favorite attacking techniques, the rook swinger. Get the rook yeah. to h3. I mean, this is the way I'll be thinking now. But first of all, can you do anything with these three pieces? So, sorry, Bjorn, I, I, I'm talking, but maybe there is, I think there is a way we can just force checkmate here, which a couple oh, of with just the three pieces? With just the three pieces. Mm. So, well done to everyone. Don't look at the chat, Bjorn. Now okay, I said no, that no, you're probably no. tempted to look. So, and everyone, white can now force checkmate. Can you see how white can force checkmate here in the, everyone, 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 everyone. Um, so queen g6 king and has uh, look, look at the most forcing moves first Bjorn so go for checks and captures and then go to moves that create threats and then go to yes. look at bringing in reinforcements so start by looking at the most forcing moves checks so let's do that yeah uh, okay well queen back queen h5 check then okay so Maybe king has to go well. to g8 yeah, and then let's see if it helps to go to queen h7 check. And then king uh, f8. King has to go there. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, and then queen h8. Check. King has to go to e7, and queen takes g7 mate, I think. Bravo! <laughs> bravo, Bjorn! I'm going to have to call you Bravo Bjorn in future. A little bit of the I think in this there. position, I would have played knight takes e6. <laughs> Oh, I, well, this is this is the thing. You should always look at the checks first. Exactly. And, and actually, this, <laughs> yeah. is, this is a common pattern. And the idea, let's just show it uh -huh. on the board. This is a very common Greek gift checkmate pattern. And this position is oh, checkmate. Yeah. And um, one, one thing we should bear in mind, if we go back to the original position, that is why we take on F7 first. Because if we try mm -hmm. to do the checkmate here, it doesn't work as well because there's a so. pawn in the way. We might still be doing very well here, but it's not as strong. So, I mean, I just think these, these are common sort of ideas in this opening. And e5, if we go back, should be looked at. If e5 doesn't work, um, knight e2 I like. The only move I would be worried about here if black can play is e5. But yep. We have one, two pieces controlling e5. Mm -hmm. Black only has one piece, so we can't go e5. So I think yeah, which means we can go e5 next move and get a good attack because mm. then our bishop springs into life. Mm. Um, yeah. Salty clown actually knows the name of that checkmate. 
Epaulette check uh, mate, and that checkmate I showed it, it has it has mate. a name, and I think Epaulette is something that soldiers wear on their uh, shoulders. <laughs> I don't uh -huh. know, maybe. So it's kind of like sh you're stuck in in the middle, something like that. I I don't know, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, right. I, I did some uh, I did some uh, videos for chess.com on it, but you know, it was a while back. <laughs> um. So the one thing to go, let's go back. So we've got this okay. all from the move A6, Bjorn, which is quite heavy analysis. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this is the kind of way you get better at chess, and this is how you learn openings better. We're looking at the Jabava London system with bishop f4 and knight c3, this new way of playing. Black has played a6, and my suggested way in future, Bjorn, would be to go bishop d3. Mm -hmm. And now if c5, you play white. Let's just make sure you've got to grips this. And everyone at home... Play the moves that I just played. See if you can remember the ideas and you get this right as white. So, Bjorn, can you remember what you should do against c5 in this case? Yeah, you should take on c5 in this case. And I think yeah, from the DVD, um, one of the kind of rule of thumbs is you should take on uh, c5 if a6 has been played. Was that right? Pretty much, yeah. That's a rule of yeah. thumb. I think you should take on c5 when a6 has been played and also when you have a bishop on d3 because... If we don't capture on c5 and we play knight to f3, which might look sensible, black can play c4, and yeah, our bishop so now cannot stay on this good diagonal. It has mm -hmm. to go to a very passive square, and black can start playing b5, and, and black has some edge, I'd say. Yep. So as a rule, you want to put your bishop on d3 always, and you want to keep your bishop on d3. We've seen how strong it is. So after c5, <laughs> you should eliminate the pawn that can push the bishop away. So well done. So let's say I play bishop takes c5. Bjorn, what should you do now? Uh, so now I would uh, I would develop uh, knight f3. Knight to f3. I see pot smoking legend. <laughs> Interesting <laughs> name. Awesome. <laughs> it, 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 awesome name. He's it, saying, sorry, Jim GM. For, uh, he's saying, I'm so poor, I can't pay attention. Ha, 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 ha. Maybe he's had a bit of a bit of a puff today. Maybe he's had a little <laughs> bit of a smoke. But love you, pot smoking legend. And if you want, if you want to have a bit more madness, this is a lesson. Tune in tomorrow when me and Blair are just getting drunk. You, you might enjoy that more. But anyway, <laughs> we're trying. We're trying to learn a bit of chess here. So after Bishop takes c five, um, over to you, Bjorn. Um. Yeah, so it's black move. Uh, Black's just taken the pawn on c five. So it's your, oh, sorry. Okay. Your, your yeah. Move here. Uh, so. I, I think it's time to castle. Yeah, let's let's get fully developed, get our king safe. Oh, sorry. It is black oh, shit, yeah. oh, you're right. <laughs> I got it wrong, man. Oh, my, 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 my fault. So black did castle. Oh, dear. Okay. And yeah. um, I'm just going to... Maybe you should cover up the uh, where I can see all the, <laughs> see all the moves you're clicking on. Oh, oh, oh okay. Um, okay, I'll, I'll try to do that. I doesn't... Uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll just try not you to... You can't put your hand it. there. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. there we go. Look at that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that work? And no one can see that at home. Okay, good. That that Perfect. works. There we go. Good, good. Okay, so I can't see what I'm doing now. <laughs> okay, so okay, okay so, so yeah. So and now we're now is the time to calculate e4. Well, basically. I think first of all. Oh, oh sorry, sorry. After oh, I, I have already gonna, castled here. Bear with me, people. I've just lost. I uh, I don't think I'm going to be able to cover them up. I'm afraid, Bjorn. Sorry about that. But um, okay, because every time I click on it, it, it goes away. So sorry, yeah. I've just just moved the screen. We're back again. And I don't um, think Harry is the right move here either. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I think castling's correct. And after knight c six, what what is the main move now? What 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 is the main thing to do now? You've got fully developed. So now at least what we're the plan is uh, e four, and then we can kind of think if we want to do it right away or if we want to prepare it. Sure. Uh, and we have to. We have to always consider black going uh, e5. As long as Correct. he can't do that, we have some time also. Correct. It's my feeling. Yes, I uh, agree. But, but we've come to the conclusion that we can play e4 right away, so why not? Why not play e4 straight away? And I think e4 straight away, as we discussed, is definitely the move to play in this position. You have to do something in the center of the board. You've got better development, so why not try to open up the position? Opening up the position when your pieces are better developed than your opponent is a good way to improve. Um, if you don't... And the, whole, yeah. and the whole idea is that uh, you're playing against uh, the bishop on c8 then. You have... Correct. Your bishop is better than his bishop at the end of the whole exchange. That's is what right. I'm understanding so, now. Yeah. So when everything gets exchanged off 
and the queens can get exchanged. Now, someone in the chat did ask me, why did I take with the F rook rather than the A rook? This is a tricky decision. I'm thinking later on, the reason I took with this one is that I have a pawn majority over on the, if we look at the pawn structure, I have a, a three versus two majority. So when it comes to the ending or middle game, a way that you, you, you try to win these positions is by creating a pass pawn where you have a pawn majority. And in order to do that, I might need the other rook to come behind those pawns. It might help me there to push them forwards. Later on, I'm thinking, I'm even thinking about the ending now already. Mm. Um, right. But this is better for white mm. because of bishop on c8. Now, um, my, so, uh, so, so would that be your plan here? Uh, your kind of next plan? Because you're, you're getting close to the end game now. And, we are. and you have a pawn, uh, pawn yep. majority. Yeah. And then your plan is just to, to push those and yep. queen it? Queen one of them? I think my plan here is twofold. Um, I think very importantly, uh, we've got to think of our own plans, but we've got to think of our opponent's plans. And one of our main advantages is this bishop here. So mm -hmm. I really want to play against that bishop. So I'm always bearing in mind, stop that bishop, stop that bishop. Stop then, then, then I'm always better. But my plan long term, I think you're right, Bjorn, is to go a3, b4, c4, and then eventually c5, b5, mm -hmm. c3, and get a pass c pawn. So that, right. that is how I'm going to get a C-pawn that will then hopefully become a queen and win me the game. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you one more question. If he plays F5 here, forcing the issue, what would you play now? This is an interesting decision to make now. So F5, what what would you guys at home play now as white in, in this position as well? Oh, I would... Uh, my instinct is just to take on C6. I know this... Uh, uh, having the double bishop or the bishop pair is good, but uh, for me it's <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Or I don't feel strong enough to exploit the. Bishop I, pair. I wouldn't worry about the bishop. I wouldn't worry about the bishop pair either. I mean, I just see his pawn structure would be horrendous. Yes, basically, totally. And if we take here as well, this bishop is just so bad now because it's got three. Yeah, pawns. now it's even worse. Yeah, it's even worse. And the knight can come in here. Knight's come, yeah. Another problem is black's got a bad. E pawn. Can, so, can I ask you a question at this sure. position? Because yeah. I was looking at the move um, bishop d5 to force the issue of switching off another bishop pair. In this in this position here, or yeah, in this position. Yeah, I think that's a good move. Because then you get your rook in and yeah, I like it. And why why again? As we said earlier on, you can swap off as many pieces as you like as long as you leave your opponent with his worst piece. With his worst piece yeah. And another reason I like this move now is that our knight has a great outpost on mm. this square. This square wasn't, a, away. It wasn't as great outpost when the pawn's back on f7 because of f3, f6. But now if you have multiple exchanges here, mm -hmm. this knight is so strong and these two pieces dominate the board and you're probably positionally winning here. This is the kind of game I think a grandmaster would win as white 99% of the time even against Magnus Carlsen I'd say a grandmaster would beat Magnus as white here maybe 90% of the time <laughs> typical position Blair would lose 100% yes of the yeah a typical winning position <laughs> that Blair, Blair would throw away yeah so uh, <laughs> indeed indeed and uh, a, lot, a lot of other people so Mary Hatman got this idea uh, as well positionally this is winning Bjorn someone's yeah. asked what, what is your rating uh, what, what is your rating Bjorn my FIDE rating is, um, well, I can Google it, FIDE, okay. Bjorn. Roughly, I you, think, can, you can give us a rough. No, I think it's 1550 or something. 15, and then okay. I have, I'm doing well in my tournament now, so I will be above 1600. It's 1551. Okay. And yeah, I'm like up 60 points uh, in the tournament so far, so <laughs> 1600 about. Okay, good. And by the way, hello to the four symbols and PPRTS. Who, who who joined in uh, the lesson today? Um, good good to have you guys here. It's quite funny, Bjorn, because we always have these ideas before the show what we're going to do. Yeah, we all spend so much time on one I game. I mean, literally, we we could spend five hours on one <laughs> game. Uh, and I honestly think, Bjorn, that this well, that's comes, what you do to get better, isn't it? This is what you do to get better. I mean, it it, it might seem overkill for a lot of people. And they're like, why the bloody hell are they looking at this position so much? And the mm. point is. We've got to move 16. We have an ending, and this has all come about from move four. And yeah, the plans... we didn't even play this, so <laughs> we didn't even play this. But in future, 
Hopefully, yeah. if you have this position and everyone exactly. at home who's bought the Jabava London system or is thinking about buying it, you will now know how to play this position. Instead of playing A3, which is a bit of a slow move, yep. let's just get developed, not fearing C5. And this is the only move you have to fear, C5. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Bjorn, I'll ask you another question here. Let's say Black develops normally and doesn't play C5. If he plays C5, we will take it. Let's say he goes bishop e7. What is your plan now? So again, I want you to hear middle game plans. So with, what I'm trying to get across is everyone at home, when you play this opening, I want you to know what you're doing all the way into the ending. Yeah. This is how so you really, I think, yeah. I think here I would uh, go back to kind of the uh, the traditional London system, uh, the idea there to put a knight on e5, uh, which I remember is always very strong when he puts his bishop on e7. Um, so that's good. my first instinct here. Very good, very good. Um, I agree. I hope you're doing well, Four Symbols, as well. I mean, uh, I'm, I, I'm thinking about playing Vienna Open this year. Um, uh, that's another great tournament in, in, in Vienna. I, I might be going over with a girlfriend to that one, but it'd be good, good to meet up if I do. So I think Bjorn is right here. You could go for G4 if you want to, but why not play sensible and develop your last piece? G4 is okay. But I do like the idea of just going for the traditional move, putting a knight on e5. Bjorn has said this. And now let's say, I don't know, b5. Now we can really think about having some fun around here. I mean, mm -hmm. Bjorn, so what do you do next here? Well, and now this g4 idea is starting to look more interesting. And g4 and h4, basically. Or maybe, maybe I could get the queen out first and then... I'm always a little bit scared of castling long in these positions, but... Uh, yep, I understand that, I understand that. Just don't castle at all. So Yeah, um, exactly. I think that would be uh, what I would end up doing here. But. Yeah. It'd be good to meet you as well, Stefan. Uh, uh, hopefully we will we will do uh, we will do soon, you know, so... And, uh, Is okay. that Stefan from the Crypt? Yes, event? yes, yeah. Oh, think, yeah, 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 how's yeah, it going, yeah. Stefan? Yeah, yeah, so <laughs> it's hard to know through people's pseudo names, but yeah, I mean... Exactly, uh, yeah, yeah. You know, it's been a while, Stefan, so hopefully we, we, when you've done your PhD, we'll definitely have a beer somewhere, definitely, and uh, yeah. Um, so there's two ideas here. I think G4, G5, checkmate, end the game is all right. Yeah. The other yeah. idea, and a good idea, like the London system normal, is to go queen f3, queen h3, line up against here, get rid of the knight on f6 and checkmate mm -hmm. on h7. I mean, yeah. you know, go for this kind of plan. And this is quite dangerous. I mean, let's say bishop b7, normal move, and then queen h3. Stefan is saying that Bjorn, you crushed him on lead chess. Yeah, uh, I was just thinking. I think it was Stefan I played on lead chess uh, the yeah. other day. I, was, I wasn't really crushing him, but uh, I, I was lucky in a couple of games. <laughs> wow, you make your own luck. You make your own yeah. luck. <laughs> I remember at the Crypt event, this is a, an event that Ginger GM did, and we're going to try to do more in future. Um, I think one of the craziest ever games of chess I had was against <laughs> Stefan Bjorn. We basically decided, we Ginger GM held this event in a crypt, in a real crypt, which had like 200 dead bodies below a church. And it, we basically, I played this guy, Stefan, a lovely chap, and um, we decided it was a fun event to play uh, drinking chess during this Blitz game. So every time a piece was taken, we had to do a shot of vodka. And, oh, my God, that one game destroyed me, Bjorn. <laughs> so totally destroyed me. Um, <laughs> but this looks like a good position. This is the standard plan in, in the yep. London system, yeah? So yep. And then you can go G4, G5, checkmate. You can go knight G4, get rid of that knight. If the knight ever comes in here, just go F3. Yeah, just kick it away. Yeah. And just kick it away. So, yeah, this is, this is good. Um... Okay, so let's. Should we go back to the game? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> we'll wow. have a brief look at the game. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll have a brief look. But I mean, these are the main opening points. I think they are important, hence why I'm going yeah. into them in detail. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, this will improve people's understanding of, of, of the opening. And if you do want to know it more, buy the DVD, of course. Is The DVD is a good DVD, isn't it, Bjorn? You can't it's say. a great DVD. And, and uh, <laughs> obviously, we talk a lot about one position, but uh, I mean, this would be one chapter out of 12 in a DVD. So you need to know how to play against yeah. lots of different systems. So, I, yeah. I, I was glad there you didn't say, oh, the DVD uh, is shit or something like that. <laughs> that, that. That would have been quite like, oh, all right, all right, well, fair enough. We'll see how it goes tonight. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm black tonight, actually. So it's, oh, you got black good. tonight. So you can, you can <laughs> call the black lion crap. We're not worried yeah, about that. Uh, you know, yeah. so, you know, that's a chess-based DVD. I don't, exactly. I don't really worry how many they sell. <laughs> so... 
Okay, so a6, and let's go on. So Bjorn in this position played a3, so we're going to get I back. Think, I think, by the way, uh, there's a video somewhere online where I'm trying to play you uh, in the black line system in uh, from Brandratti in a blitz. Do you remember this? Oh, not really. No, I was a bit drunk, probably. So. No, oh, no. you were that drunk? Yeah, yeah. Well, you crushed me. So. Okay. <laughs> if but anyone you... want to know how to play against the black line, you, you, it seems like you have some moves that you're not showing in the DVD. But yeah. Oh, <laughs> I, I would never do that, Bjorn. I think you were drunk, my friend. I remember yeah, you saying that at the time, well. <laughs> and, and I, I think Malcolm Payne, and we'd say, no, you just haven't watched the DVD properly, Bjorn. That's it might be true. Uh, might be. But yeah. most importantly, Bjorn. You kept crushing Captain Bumratty, who's not around today. Oh, but why just... isn't he here? Oh. I know, I know. Just to rub it in a little bit, yeah. I would be floating. Yeah, that was uh, that was the highlight of the weekend. That was beating <laughs> Captain Bumratty, the organizer of Bumratty. So that was. But maybe we'll clip this and send it over to him. So let's. Do you, do you, have you got? He gave me the compliment on my chest life, uh, which was uh, I was becoming his favorite person to lose to. <laughs> Now that is an interesting compliment. I did, I did not know how to take that. <laughs> <laughs> Typical Jerry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, have you got a personal message you'd like to to send to Jerry? Uh, no, but uh, I'll see him okay. soon again, and and so, I'm always up for a for a game. <laughs> yes. Sorry, my my phone is doing funny things there. Um, okay, so let's go on with the game. So A three. Yep. Yep. And A3. now C five was played. Yeah. So even here, I would consider taking that one. Um, yep. But we have. Lost I will a... now that I remember everything. So <laughs> we have lost kind of an important tempo with the move a three. But yep. I, I definitely, I definitely consider taking it. Um, but instead, Bjorn goes g four. You're, you're a bit of a you're a bit of a Viking, aren't you, Bjorn? You know. The thing is also, um, it's kind of this. Uh, sometimes you have to kind of look at the um, opponent you're playing. And I had a, I looked at some of his games, and I had a v really strong feeling that he did not like tactical games. <laughs> okay. And like, uh, he did not like when the opponents have initiative, basically. And I wanted to kind of uh, stress him as early as possible. And his time was running after this move. His time was running quickly, <laughs> <laughs> basically. So, so it worked quite well. This G four stuff, yeah. So, I yeah, mean, well, uh, well, yeah, it's, it's, track it's, it's, well, it's very it. interesting. We're, we're, I mean, I know I read one of my favorite books was Chess for Tigers, and they said in this book, like when you're playing older people, you know, if you're he playing, <laughs> if you're playing an old man, then you should try to like go complicated and and go, it's you know, like go it. for tactics. And it's quite a good little psychological. Um, tip there actually in actual yep. fact so um so let's see if it works so black now took on d4 yep. took back and he went g6 okay so you obviously got him a bit scared by this yep. and i mean one of the great things about jabava london system which i will go on about and the london system in general is and again i just have to demonstrate it this bishop is so bad it's stuck you know it's stuck behind these pawns all of our pieces have a bit of length, but the bishop on c8 is bad. So now I think you played a clever move, because obviously you, you were thinking about going g5, but you didn't like knight h5. Exactly, yeah. So you played bishop e2 to control that square. I like that yep. move. Nice play. It is, it's one of my favorite books, um, uh, Mary Hatman, Chess for Tigers. Fantastic book. h6, and now queen d2. I, I think these are all great moves. This is a little bit of pressure over here, so mm -hmm. we don't need to say anything about this. Knight c6, and now your next move is interesting. In this position, you play queen e3. Now, explain that move to me, sir. Yeah, let me see. Um... Because another thing I want to tell everyone at home, if you want to get better at chess, you should be able to explain to yourself and to someone else who understands chess very well why you played each move that you play. If you can't explain to yourself or someone else, imagine every move you're doing what I do and you're trying to explain the move. If you can't explain the move to someone why you're playing it, then you probably should not be playing that move. You need to have a reason. So I'm sure Bjorn has a reason here, but that's just a little tip that you, you should you should be able you know help you with your reasoning. Okay, so yeah. so Bjorn I'm, is now going to explain it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did have an explanation, but I'm trying to to remember it. Uh, I seem to remember. I thought it was uh, quite a good move, but <laughs> it, it, could, um, it could well be. But I, I need to know the reason. So, uh, was it to cover knight e4? Maybe. 
that's one one thing I'm thinking of. Maybe 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 you're worried about the yeah, knight coming to was, e4. Yeah, maybe and, I was a little bit worried about. And you wanted to that. cover that square. Yeah. No, yeah, there was also yeah, and I think I was starting to uh, think about ta tactics uh -huh. here to take on d5 at some point. Okay. Um, Seems a long. I mean, way there off. would be a long. Uh, yeah, it's uh, far away from it, but I think maybe I got a little bit stuck on that. I'm uh, putting my bishop on f3. Uh, okay. And then there would be actually some pressure on that square indirectly. Yeah, um, okay. I mean, the way... The way but, yeah, it's, it's, I think that was what I was thinking about. Just... Going maybe this. I was getting it too much into this playing tactical stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think the idea of going queen e3 bishop f3 on the hope that you're going to take there with a knight is it seems a little bit artificial yeah, um, yeah. and even if you're playing someone who might you know might fall for tactics you've always no, but got hang, to, yeah hang on also there's a there's a problem in the position yeah uh, with getting my knight out sure sure i agree this knight is a problem and i think that was also part of the reason because uh, let's see i want to play bishop f3 and knight e2 yeah yeah, but why does the queen help there? No, not really. No, no I don't have any better explanation than what I said. Okay. A little bit artificial attack. <laughs> maybe. I mean, it's it's not a terrible move because maybe the queen is slightly better placed here because you do control any active ideas and knight e4 yeah, yeah. that your opponent has because now if he goes there, well, maybe he can still play it, but this now gets quite complex. I, I don't know. I, I think here you should be doing well. well Let's have a look at if I go bishop um, bishop f3 first and see if he can do that move then. Here? Uh, uh, no, before I go queen e3. Sure. Okay. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Was yeah. I was worried about this. So what, no. what if you just... I, I, okay, now I've got to think what I take. Yeah, well, exactly. Take this with. So, yeah, exactly. So I was thinking about taking, taking, and then the d4 pawns weak at the end. But I, I would be now thinking, okay, what piece do I want to put on this square at the end of capturing? Is my bishop better uh -huh. there or is my knight better there? And because my opponent's pawn is on e6, when your opponent puts a pawn on a light square, he naturally weakens the dark squares. When your opponent puts a pawn on a dark square, you, you weaken the opposite. So these squares here seem a bit weak. So I'd yep. be thinking about getting my knight to this square. So I catch yeah, with so the bishop. There first. Okay. And then when my knight comes here, I, I would be thinking about Trying to get, you know, what what does black actually play here? Because I have bishop e5 in a lot of positions as well. No, but it takes on d4 with the queen. Okay, so let's say he takes with the queen. And now I would go queen takes queen, knight yep. takes, and I would gain a tempo castle queen side. Mm -hmm. And I have numerous threats here. I'm not even material down here. So th this, this looks very dangerous, no? Yeah, I think actually this is what... Um... I couldn't look deep enough, basically, to see that okay. this was good for me. I was yeah. a little bit scared that when he came and took on d4, it would just like be nothing there. So I think that's why I played yeah. this uh, queen move first, okay. because then I avoid all that stuff. By the way, Mary Hatman in the chat is pointing out another interesting option. He's saying, in this position, you could also consider going just simply knight takes mm -hmm. uh, with a tactical idea here that if queen takes d4, what can you play as white in this position? Oh yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, maybe bishop even takes bishop takes c six check. Boom. It's yeah, quite quite strong. Pretty pretty strong. <laughs> I like that. It's a nice understatement there. Normally, you know, <laughs> quite strong, quite strong, old boy. <laughs> it's a jolly good move that one. Jolly good move, old boy. Um, yes. Yeah. So that means black has to take the knight here. But now I think white also has a winning move here. Can anyone in the chat see white's winning move? In this, maybe there's more than one, but I mean, I see one move which I think yeah. is fairly straightforward. Bishop, and... Bishop e5 looks very promising. Bishop e5. I, li I like that. Very promising. So you know, you're you're understating these moves. But, you know, <laughs> you're just you know, you're holding back. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah. I mean, this move creates a fork. Uh, mm. Obviously, you can castle queenside as well, which is also very good. But Bishop e5 oh. does does look uh, does look very nice. So so I, I think queen e3 is a little bit unnecessary. Yep. Uh, bishop e, bishop f3 and knight e2 I really like, but let's move yep. on with the game. So queen e3, and now your opponent played g5. Whoa, here he comes. Okay, so 
you move the bishop back to g3. I like that. I think I, I think that's a good move. Queen b6. Yeah, and this was when I was like, okay. Uh, Do you or don't you? Uh, yeah, exactly. Do I? I no. To be honest, I I never really considered castling long. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, which is obviously the move. Uh, I know this because I looked at the computer, but and I felt really silly by not even considering it. It was just not not in my head. <laughs> okay. And I don't I don't know how to explain it, but yeah, um, I was Strange. a little bit annoyed. It felt like, gosh, shit, he's he's getting a pawn here. It looks like. Yeah. Uh, so this game is a bit of a bit of a surprise, yeah. Yeah, it did, and I okay. think sometimes when you you get a little bit surprised like that. Um, you don't see obvious moves. You start to think of, I have to do something really clever now. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's a very good point. I, I think you know, in general, if you miss a move, which we all miss, uh, I mean, I'm, I've missed many moves and I still do, and I, I will in the future. So does Hikaru. So does Magnus. Mm. When you miss a move, it's how you deal with it. Your opponent might play a move, which is complete shock to you, and mm -hmm. you've got to think. Um, Hang on a minute. You just got to take a deep breath and think. Okay, I'm not. Don't panic, is the key thing. And this is the kind of move that would definitely scare me as well. But I'd mm -hmm. hopefully think. Well, hang on a minute. Okay, he is bring. Let's think of the plus points of this for us. He's mm -hmm. wasting time bringing his queen out. Yep. He hasn't moved his king. He hasn't moved his bishop. So he might grab a pawn. But on the plus side, I can probably get pretty decent compensation. And mm -hmm. I, I mean, my thought here would be. Obviously, I like castling, castling but, long, but yeah. my other thought would be, which pawn do I want to lose? Uh, and I, I, my thinking would be, I'd be more willing to lose the pawn on b2 yeah. because I've got rook b1. Um, so I'd be thinking, well, what happens? Can I do something like knight f3? But maybe then g4 drops. Yeah, but, that's, yeah, the, problem. that's yeah. the problem. I didn't have time to play bishop yeah. f3. So. Yeah. So maybe castling is correct here. I mean, this 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 is probably all right because he, if he had a b4 move coming soon, mm -hmm. I'd be very scared because he can open your king up. But yep. as his queen is now in front of the pawn, I think your king should be quite safe over here, really. So yep. I'd imagine. I think I'd be happy yep. with that. I, I basically know this because I looked at the computer, that yeah. that was the computer move. But yeah, I, it looks scary to me. But maybe if I consider it, I would, I would play it. But. It does look a bit scary, but the only thing to watch out for is a sacrifice here, and I think you should be able to defend mm. against that. I mean, because yeah. your knight can always come back to b1, and you're defending, you're defending very easily there. So, um, okay, well let's have a look because it got very exciting later on, yeah. So, yeah, this is where it gets interesting, actually. So, okay, yeah, uh, I first played knight ah, a4, so I thought it was a, a one way to defend. My my idea is here uh, that if he takes the pawn on d4 yeah. i want to play bishop uh bishop e5 oh well no i have to take off the queen first obviously but when he takes with a knight i want to play bishop f5 okay and this is also what happens in the game actually wow uh different version of this okay. but it gets extremely tactical so <laughs> okay so this happens in the game so should we see how it works in the game shall Let, we yeah let's see what happens because yeah. what it does is he goes uh, i might not have gotten all the moves in this line yeah. uh in the one you got for me because uh, sure. he goes queen a5 check ah so we get the same and thing. i only have one move and yeah. then he goes back and, and he re he was really happy with a um, a draw with the draw here. I was and I was like really annoyed. I played. I did. I had spent twenty minutes on my clock, and I was like, I'm not here to play a draw. Like, come on. <laughs> I like it. You're you you are you're a proper Viking. <laughs> you're a man. You're a man who goes for it. So I, I like it. So. But I tell you what, I yeah. did something stupid because I I repeated the position two times. I thought. Yep. So I went back. Um, I went back once with yep. knight a four. He goes back, and I go back with the knight, and thinking like, okay, next time I'm gonna do something different. But this is the third time it's on the board, so he could have claimed the draw here. Uh, he could have claimed the draw. <laughs> oh dear! How would you have felt if he'd have claimed the draw? I would be very, very upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, luckily, he did. I mean, this is actually a very interesting uh, thing because I'm a grandmaster, and I. I'm not even 100% sure what the correct procedure is when you want to claim a draw by a repetition of three times. I think before you play the move, you have to find the arbiter. So this is in tournament chess. Mm. 
you have to go and find the arbiter and you have to say with my next move i am claiming a draw exactly yeah so i think if you if you play queen b6 now and then you say i'm claiming a draw i think it's too uh -huh. late i think oh, it's too late good to know <laughs> i think so but don't quote me on that maybe someone in the chat okay. can say i think you have to claim the draw claim it before you make the move before okay. you yeah. play the move so okay. um i mean i think the most famous case of a, a very world class player getting a rule wrong was Korchnoi. and he was playing i think it was in the candidates of the world championships against someone like karpov and you know he had to go up to the arbiter and he and I, I think this is how it was, but I've said this before. I might get it wrong. I can't remember, but it was something on the lines are he um, he went up to the arbiter and he said to the arbiter, "Can I castle my rook through check?" <laughs> so he wasn't sure if he could castle queenside and his rook could go through some kind of check, you know. And he didn't know the rules, so he didn't know if he could castle or not. I mean, this is one of the best players in the world. It's, uh, it's, it's nerves, I guess. <laughs> yeah, it's stranger. So I, I don't think he was a, a man who got nervous, Courtney, really. But hmm. you, 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 you never know. Okay, hmm. so let's have a look. So you now very bravely, Bjorn, and I, I admire you for your braveness. The yeah. best way to get better is to play bravely. Even if you lose some games, you've got to go for it. You went B four. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and I was happy with this because I I, I basically calculated uh, six moves ahead of here. I think. Where I think like material, I'm I'm okay, and I have the initiative. Uh, the computer says it's a little bit better for black actually, and I was surprised by that. But let's okay. have a look at it and see what you think. Okay, so now this this move, I like the idea because uh, we gain space on the queen side. If we can defend that pawn next uh, somehow, I don't know. Rook d1 even is not so silly. You know what is black doing? We're playing against this bishop, so black mm -hmm. has to make a decision, and he's got to decide can he take that pawn and of course if you can play the most aggressive move i always recommend you should do because you know you, you should force yourself to calculate and think ahead now he took with a queen here yep just out of interest if he took with a knight on on d4 what would you planning what were you planning to do against that one because you obviously had to consider this possibility as well he's put himself in a very yeah. uh very yeah nasty exactly pit. i think king d2 was my response here king d2 uh, okay was that would that work? Maybe, maybe, maybe King. I D think that was what I was planning at least. Okay, with the idea of just going Bishop E five next, yeah. Yep. Uh, it probably looks good, yeah. And you're also maybe threatening Knight A four in some positions to get rid of the yep. Queen's defense. Okay, so let's have a look. So he went Queen takes D four, and um, I and here Queen takes D four, Knight takes D four. So Black's won a pawn, but Bjorn's idea was to play bishop to e5 here. Yeah, and, <laughs> and allow him to fork me. This is getting crazy, yeah. Yeah. So would it <laughs> be not... I, I allow him to fork fork uh, the king and the rook, but I also calculated that he can't get out with this uh, knight afterwards. Uh, and so I get two, um, two knights for the rook, and also I th thought that the his rook would be in problems uh, actually i couldn't really see all the way but i thought he would have some problems defending his rook okay. but okay let's let's have a look let's have a look I, i'm just thinking here bjorn it'd be very nice if he had a bishop on g7 and you had a knight on b2 i've never seen a position like that before you know just that diagonal if you can just oh, okay. picture, picture that <laughs> diagonal i mean look oh, at that i've never seen a, a diagonal <laughs> like that in my life a diagonal which is only taken yeah. over by pieces if you played, if you played Bishop G seven, I think I would just gone for it just for the if you just get, for the beauty. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that, that's lovely. Some some aesthetical pleasing uh, thing there. But okay, he he has to in a chess wise, obviously take on C two because he's got two mace. So let's see how this works out. He took on C two, yeah. and um, after taking on C two, he went King D two. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we go king d2, and now he has to take on a1, so this is forcing. Yep. We take on f6, attacking the, the rook. So again, this is a very forcing yep. line. And again, forcing lines are, are, should be quite easy to calculate. And if you're not very good at calculating ahead, which I know a lot of people are not, there are ways to improve this. Um, do puzzles, do puzzles, puzzle apps. Chess.com has got great puzzles. Get a book on puzzles, you prefer books improve your visualization so try to just do exercises where you can't see the board these will help you think further ahead which you need to do you need to be able to think 
uh, you know, calculate the consequences or tactics. So bishop takes f6, and now uh, rook g8. And here, you, you again, this is very interesting because you just moved the rook. So again, this is very mm -hmm. forcing to attack the knight. The knight went here, and now you went king to c2. And that knight is indeed trapped, and he only has one sort of way to try to get that out, yeah? Yeah. Uh, and uh, knight, knight c5 Nice. Gives him gives him a couple of uh, pawns back basically. Yeah. So I think what we need to do when you're calculating a tactical line, what what top players do, they will calculate it as far as they can until it sort of peters out and there's no more tactics, mm -hmm. and then before they go into the variation, before they play the first move that leads into that line, they will try to assess the position. And obviously, if they think the position is better for them, they will go into it. They double check it first. If they don't think it's good for them, they look for other options. So what we need to do. And what, what hopefully you did do was assess this position. So he tried to get out and assess this position all those moves back. And what was your yeah. assessment then, Bjorn? So it's quite quite very interesting position because he has yeah, exactly. three pawns. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think uh, I couldn't see this clear in my head, obviously. Uh, sure. I, I mean, I know you probably can, but I was thinking that in this position, I have four pieces out. And materially, I'm not doing so so bad. Um, what it is maybe, yeah, he, he has a lot of pawns, uh, pawns. but I have four pieces out and his pieces are not playing. So I thought it would be, give me a lot of play basically. It's very interesting position. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm with, you know, without a shadow of doubt, I expect the computer prefers black because computer will just like say, okay, let's count. I've got a rook exactly, and three yeah. pawns. So I've got six, seven, eight. I've got eight points versus your six points, so I'm two points yeah. up. But as Bjorn's pointed out, dynamic things about the position. I personally, and, and I think everyone, prefers having two pieces to a rook and a pawn. Mm -hmm. Normally two pieces in the middle game is worth a rook and two pawns. But this is a really hard position to evaluate. And I actually like the way you're thinking, Bjorn. I, 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 I see what you're saying. I see that Black's pieces are very passive. He's still got this bad bishop, bad rook on a8. You have some quite active moves. Your knight can come in. Your bishop can move. You have h4 opening up your rook. I, I, yeah. and you have your knight maybe trying to come into b6. I'm seeing... I, I'm actually coming around to your way of thinking. I think... I don't know. I, I mean, I think I'd prefer to be white here. I mean, just because it's easier to play. And when you're trying to assess a position, don't always count points. You know, obviously, if you're loads of points down, it, it, you can't play it. But yeah. <laughs> if it's an easier position for you to play than your opponent, that counts for a lot. We don't play computers in tournaments, especially, you know, at, at, at lower levels. You only play computer-like games mm. if you're Magnus Carlsen's strength. So you can't assume your opponent's going to play the best moves. It really, if you have an easier position to play, that counts for a lot. So I like your yeah. way of thinking. I like, I mean, I like your way of also thinking. Also looking here. at like uh, uh, his moves here. Um, he doesn't have many pawns to move. Maybe he can move the B pawn. Uh, all other pawns can't be moved, as far as I can see. Well, maybe A pawn, but that doesn't really make much sense. Um, and he can't move any of his rooks, basically, to improve them. Uh, and the bishop have only one square. That doesn't help him a lot, directly at least. And it was very interesting, the, the easy plans as you talk about. Um, that you highlighted was actually exactly what happened in the game and those led to a very quickly uh, um, end in this game uh, just bishop d3 with the threat of going bishop h7 and then the rook is suddenly trapped yeah i like it and, I'm trying to activate and then, pieces as much as you can so yeah exactly and then really? pushing the pushing harry <laughs> yeah 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 i mean I, I i i most people in the chat are saying they prefer black here because mm -hmm. the computer probably says black's better and um, black has, you know, three pawns. But if you think about how black's going to actually use his material advantage, I don't see how he's going to use it. And I think you summed up the position very well. I mean, I think, okay, you can try to go b5, a5, b4, but that takes a lot of it's moves. very slow. Yeah. Very slow. And you've got this bishop d3 creates a threat. Your pieces are very good. And I really, I'm quite impressed with the way you have actually assessed this position. I mean, I... I I I kind of like white here. I I don't really care always what the computer says. I will disagree with it because from a practical point of view, it's humans playing. 
and it's much easier for you to play as white. So I, I, I think that's a very you, you've assessed this very well, Bjorn. Um, it's, it's one of these positions where okay, the computer is probably right if both players are playing perfectly, but uh, we're sixteen hundred players and we're not going to play perfectly. And I have I have a lot more moves um, that are good, uh, and he will have to find the best move maybe ten moves ahead. Yeah. Without, uh, if he doesn't get in trouble. So, kind of statistically speaking, I think it's better for White with two sixteen hundred players uh, yeah. playing. It's I, my I, assessment. I agree. Yeah. By the way, thank you, Mad Ballster, for subscribing. And um, if you want to support this channel, subscribing does massively help me. Um, also, a shout out to Disclaimer six six six, who is uh, having a cocktail and enjoying the stream. Uh, I'm I'm slightly jealous, Bjorn. Are you slightly jealous? <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Um, Not slightly, but yeah, I, I, I'm I, just, I mean, looking, it's kind of split the audience this position. I mean, I, I see interesting. it is. I see where six oh two is coming from, and he's saying uh, about this move bishop e seven, which actually seems like a pretty good move. But you've got to watch out for bishop h seven, and you've got to calculate that. Maybe it doesn't work. Yeah, but it's really, mm. it's really what kind of positions you like playing. This is so important as well. Are you happy trying to defend positions like this, or do you like having the freer pieces and? You should pick openings that get you into positions you like playing. That's another thing I think is very important. Um, but I like the way you're thinking, Bjorn. I mean, I'm going with you. I prefer white. And other people in the chat are also saying they prefer white as well um, in the position. Okay, cool. Hello, Charlie. You're going to come on camera? No, you're off again. Okay, you're off. Okay, Charlie Charlie came. And, <laughs> quick load. And also, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Hi, Charlie. He, he's gone. He's gone again now, I'm afraid. So. Okay. Uh, Charlie in space. <laughs> Uh, also, it's. I mean, I'm happy anyway because I I got a really interesting position, and and that's all I want to do on Thursdays now. <laughs> I don't want to have like a repetition draw after no. this 50 move or whatever it was. No, so that's fair enough. And and, and this this is fun to play for for yes, both sides. Definitely, definitely. So I I like it. I like the way you've done this. So let's have a look now at how things develop. So you know, it's it's. I don't know what I mean. It's easier for White to play, and I think that counts for a lot. So your opponent grabbed another pawn. Bloody yeah, hell. I think that's greedy. I think with the suggestion yeah. from the chat, uh, yeah. Bishop a e seven is uh, best move. Um, nice, nice definitely. suggestion. And that's yeah. a good move from disclaimer. I, oh, no, not disclaimer. It was from. Let me get this right. Six oh two. I call you Magister. Uh, and um, this is good because when when you're trying to defend, you want to swap off your opponent's most active pieces and. This mm. idea of swapping off the bishop is okay. I was wondering here, what happens if you go bishop h7? Though? Yeah. I mean, it, this this now gives you some material back. I expect your opponent didn't play this because he may have not wanted to enter in the tactics. Mm -hmm. And the point is here. I, I think I, rook f8, you go bishop g7. Yep. And I quite like uh, this position now. But if I was black here, I very happily, I think, take on f6. And now try to start using my pawns in some yeah, manner. Exactly. So something like bishop. Maybe I'd take this knight first take knight. because I want to move my e-pawn, but I don't want to allow that. Yeah, exactly. Because it makes sense for him to swap up some pieces and just play with the pawns. Yeah. And he has three pawns for the piece. Oh, but your, mm. knight, your knight controls that. So, um, mm. But something like that I'd be thinking of playing. Maybe even bishop d7 now with the idea of going rook c8. That's a good move, mm -hmm. isn't it? And he's got the activity oh, yeah, now. That's annoying to defend, yeah. yeah. I mean, this mm. is the typical technique. When, when you're actually points up, as Black was, you can sacrifice some points back to activate your pieces and take the initiative. So so I think Bish, I think you're right. Bishop A3 is very greedy. I mean, mm. you already got three extra pawns. Why do you need a fourth one? I mean, come on. It's <laughs> yeah, exactly. like, you know, you greedy bastard. <laughs> well, I, I guess his thinking is that, like, his A and B pawn is going to be unstoppable now. Sure. As long as he can defend on it's just kind of yeah. crossing his fingers and saying, yeah, I... He probably doesn't have mate before I get a queen. So. Yeah, but I mean that that takes like you know a lot of moves to get those yeah. guys running down the board, doesn't it? So, uh, yeah. so let's have a look at what you played now. So after bishop takes a three, you went for the material. I, I'm I'm also seeing some ideas with knight. No, that doesn't work. Cause he's always got okay. Grab the material. Why not? So bishop h seven. This traps the rook. And yeah, he did now play king two. Yeah, I think he. Oh no! You play. Oh, you play king. To no, yeah, I think he played king. I think he realized that the king, uh, the rook was trapped, okay. so he might just. Yeah, I, don't, I really don't understand why he did that, but. Okay, he falls apart now. Yeah, so so you got him. You yeah. mean, I, I like the way he plays, and let's just see if anyone in the chat can find White's 
uh, correct move. And I, I think Bjorn, I think you played a really good game here, Bjorn. I mean, uh, oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, I do. I honestly think that. I think it's quite unique. You went for the win. You played bravely. You played this slightly slow A3, but it's okay. Mm. And now, what is the correct move in this position for White? Can anyone get it in the chat? So I like the move that Bjorn played. Um, it's 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 a move that I I, I would often see. <laughs> Let's give everyone a bit of a clue um, in this position. Ah, uh, there we go. Here's all the uh... yeah. The four symbols <laughs> is in. Uh, yeah, guy in the box is in. Merry Hat Man is suggesting a good move. Don't get me wrong, but let let's go. Let's go for Harry. Harry, get the Harry porn going. Harry, Ooh. yay! Bjorn's even got the blasting <laughs> Harry porn going up the board there. So yeah, the move the move to play here is without a doubt H4, and. I love the idea of ripping Black's position apart. The bishop here is so strong. We want to get our rook to h8 and finish him off. And I don't think any, anyone's ever said that about you, Martin, Merry Hatman. I'm obviously too positional. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, 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 I've, I've played you in the grob many times on the streams, Martin, and I, I can certainly not say you're too positional. And four symbols, checkmate is the end of the game. Nice move. Exactly, yeah. H four is always a winning move, isn't it? Always. Uh, it's pretty much, yeah. Pretty, pretty much. The one mistake I made in the title. As long two, as there's a pawn on H two. As long as there's a pawn on H two, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> if your opponent hasn't taken a pawn. Um, if anyone saw my uh, title Tuesday stream, I was playing penguin uh, you know i'm sure most people know who penguin is and my one mistake in that is i did not play h4 yeah <laughs> my god i'm still having nightmares about that and uh, had i played h4 i, I would have um, you know got a winning you know a, a very good position against penguin so it was yeah oh dear anyway on, on we go that's like barcelona playing a game and, and like oh we forgot to use messi oh <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a very good analogy yeah yeah it is it is it's you know it's it's totally yeah, a very good analogy bjorn i like oh, it you. yeah yeah I'll, I'll remember that one i'll, I'll steal that <laughs> off you for future you know so oh here's a question for you simon okay did you did you come up with the names for the pieces yourself or did you pick that up from somebody at any time? Uh, I've always been wondering. The name of the pawns, yeah, I, I just made it up, really. I mean, like, Harry... So it's your invention. Sorry? So it's your invention, truly. Um, I, 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 I think so. I mean, I'm, they may, I may have got the ideas from other places, and they might have been subconsciously in there, but as far as I know... I mean, I'll tell you why. I'll, t I'll tell you why I call the pawns the way they are. And, you, you know, Harry... Um, it, the reason I call it Harry is because of Dirty Harry, Clint Eastwood... And it just uh -huh. and it just seemed like Dirty <laughs> Harry, you know, who's this right, tough, right, yeah. tough guy uh, coming doesn't, up the board. Doesn't matter, just yeah, just get on with it. And he, he just wants to checkmate. He's not scared of anything. <laughs> um, I called it Gary because Gary's a very English name, and my mate's called Gary. Yep. I called it Freddy after Freddy Krueger, you know, uh -huh. the horror film, because it, um, I often use my f pawn in the Dutch defence, and I thought it often creates a bit of terror on the board. So Freddy, and then Eddie the e pawn. He, he normally takes off, and I named him after... Uh, Eddie the Eagle. Eddie the Eagle. Do you know Eddie oh, the Eagle? I mean, everyone in Norway knows Eddie the Eagle. <laughs> He's such a I mean, a ski legend. jumping is <laughs> yeah. such a big sport here, and uh, Eddie the Eagle is like a... Oh, he's a legend. Uh, he's a bloody legend. legend. Yeah. He's a legend. <laughs> if you don't know who Eddie the Eagle is, there's a Just film... Just YouTube Eddie the Eagle. <laughs> Absolute legend. I mean, he really was. Have you seen the film out on him, Bjorn? No, no, I haven't. Um, I will now. <laughs> oh, you've got to see the film. There's a film on him. And there's a film, Eddie the Eagle was uh, an English ski jumper. Okay. And he, he, was, oh, he, he was absolutely, um, I mean, he had big glasses and he was quite nerd looking. And he went over to compete in the Very. Olympics and he was pretty terrible, but he <laughs> gave it his all. <laughs> so, the, the thing is, in ski jumping, it's, yeah. it's much more dangerous if you don't jump long. If you kind of jump yeah. like he did you land on what's i don't know the english word for yeah. it it's called the kuln yeah. which is like the the first part of the uh, of the ski uh, or the hill uh, and that doesn't go uh, straight down it goes very uh, yeah. straight forward and when yeah. you land on that it really hurts so his jumping was a lot more dangerous than the, any of the professionals basically i mean <laughs> you know he was he was a legend he's actually he was a legend he was a legend i mean the guy the guy was 
he's a hero. He deserves to be a hero because he went and learnt ski jumping. No one else had done it in England. He went to the Olympics. He took part. He funded himself. He went against all the rules and he gave it a go. And it, it, it's sort of, you know, it's one of those like it wasn't always a happy story, but it was it was great, man. So that's why Eddie the Eagle. That it's got to be called Eddie, I think, Bjorn. Yeah, the E porn. Of course, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you got Derek the D porn. I don't know why I called him Derek. Um, Cedric, I called him. I don't know why, but Charlie's probably a better name. <laughs> then you got Barry. Yeah, you know, should be Charlie. Should yeah. be Charlie. And then you got Barry because Barry's very English. And you got Ari, which is Harry's brother. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, that makes and, sense. Ari yeah. and Ari. Okay. Yeah. Good. Well, so there no, you go. nobody can claim this has not been educational. That's, I mean, exactly. <laughs> naming naming the name of the pawns, you know, <laughs> after after characters. But maybe everyone exactly. else should, you know, should think of names. And I, I get asked this a lot, Bjorn. That people ask me, what, why don't you give them female names? And well, the reason is, um, when you get a pawn to the other end of the board, it turns into a queen. Yeah. So every every pawn dreams of becoming a queen and having that change of sex. And Harry wants to become Harriet, and they all turn uh -huh. into females. So that's why I don't. And I, I, there was one American guy who actually writes for. Uh, um, I'm going really off tar topic now, sorry, but you know, <laughs> sod it. He writes for one of the American magazines, and he's a right tosser. And um, he, he's, I think he's like an FM, and I've had to block him. And he was, he was accusing me of being transphobic or something because I was talking like this. And he okay. is going on about this guy's clearly him and Blair, uh, you know, disrespecting all this. And it's like, oh, for God's sake! And he's actually, I think he was on a podcast, a Perpetual Chess, recently. Um, Hartman or something, but he just comes across as a complete and utter arsehole. Um, yeah. Anyway, there we go. That's my rant out the way. <laughs> <laughs> so it's got to happen occasionally. Um, so Cedric was the dude Voldemort killed after. Okay, yeah, that's uh, okay. Yeah, guy in box, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cedric, <laughs> Cedric the sea. The Harry Potter character. Yes, indeed, Cedric the good old sea porn. Okay, so Bjorn, you played Harry four. Great yep. move, and I like the way you're playing this now. So let's have a look. So he took on h four. And then we got the rook in, which is great yep. because we're aiming to get the rook all the way to h8 mm -hmm. and deliver checkmate. So good play. He has to defend it with bishop f8. And I love the way you're playing this now because forwards, forwards, forwards. Always try to play the most active move if you can. And Bjorn does. He uses Gary. And he's trying to get rid of the h pawn. So rook h8 is checkmate. Great play so far. And did your opponent manage? Okay, so he has to go bishop g7. He has yep. to try and defend his king. And now you simply took this one. And look at Gary. Gary is going to turn into Harriet. You know, Gary's, is, <laughs> Gary's becoming very strong here. He is. So, yeah. Pawn nice. takes h6 check. I mean, I, I'm not really commenting on these moves. I don't need to. These are great moves. King h8. And now you create another threat, knight e5. And the one thing I really like about this game, Bjorn, we said from move. Let's go back. It's move 32. We said from move four that one of the problems Black has in the Jabava London system is this bishop because yeah. it's stuck behind these pawns. And if you can't yeah. move this bishop, you can't get this rook out. And people yeah. might be thinking, oh, that's not really relevant at all. Well, it does look never at, happen. Yeah. Look, at the, look at the position on move 32. Look at those guys. He actually resigned. He resigned without moving those guys. So brilliant. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> it's great. I mean, he, he's he hasn't changed those pieces at all. And what mm. you somehow done is leave him with his bad pieces. So this is quite a quite an important little lesson here. And um, so let's see how it went. It went okay. It went uh, f six. Yeah, and I think here, here I think you should stop because I've looked at this uh, at the computer. And I think there's obviously two moves to to choose, and I think oh, we should lovely. ask which one is the best. Lovely, I, I really like it. Okay, so um, oh, I like the way you finished it, Bjorn. Yeah, good calculation. Yeah. Okay, so this is no, no, because what I did was not the uh, not the best way. I, oh, really? I mean, I I found a way of uh, oh, I see. I that see was the winning one. exactly, yeah. but there was a mate there. I think I, there is. Okay, yeah. so there's two ways to win this position. <laughs> And everyone in the chat, let's see if you can find it now. So Bjorn found one of the ways. Um, can you see one of the ways? And can you see both of the ways that White can now force the win? One of them is checkmate. Or, or, or both of them will end with the pawn queening pretty much. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Give, give me the sequence of moves here for both variations. And 
I think the thing is, Bjorn, when you see one win in a game of chess, you exactly, don't, you don't yeah, need yeah. to find the other one. I mean, even no. Magnus Carlsen's done this. He's found one win. And I remember it was very famous. People were moaning about his move because it was only plus <laughs> yeah. three and it wasn't plus <laughs> exactly. six. And it's like, who cares? He wins the game, whatever, you know. It doesn't yeah. matter. So so what's the win? Don't just give me one move. I, I, I really dislike it when people give me one move because one move on its yep. own means nothing. You have to, you have to, I, I say I, did, I really hate it. I don't. I don't want to, do, I don't want to give, give you guys in the chat hate, but try to find a sequence of moves. So, um, well, Mary Hatman's found one of the wins. Well done. Yeah, Mary, well done. I, th I think that's what you played, isn't it, Bjorn? Sick. That's what I. That's the line I played. Yeah. Yeah. And the four symbols. Well done, Stefan. Well done, my well, my friend. Yeah. Stefan to the rescue. Stefan, nice. Stefan to the rescue. <laughs> yes. And Ude has also found uh, uh, another way to do it. So well done. Well done there as well. And. Uh, Okay, I think most people have got the right idea. I mean, there's there's two options. Your knight is attacked. You want to use your knight. You want to play as aggressively as possible. So you either come to f7 or to g6 with check. And you have to calculate what you're going to do after that. And you want to combine it maybe with your pawn queening. Mm -hmm. So the first question, the first, what Bjorn played is very good. And he, and he forced the win through checks. Very nice. He went knight g6 check. And in this position, the black king can't go to g8. Well, it can, mm. but after h7, we queen on h8, win the game very easily. So the king has to go here. And now, very nice finish from Bjorn. He went knight to f8 check. These guys are dead. And the king goes back to h8. And now he used... It's. I wish it was Harry, but it's actually Gary, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. It's actually Gary. Gary has turned into Harry, and Harry. Yeah. Well, Gary's going to turn into Harriet when it reaches the end of the board. So h7 played, and there's no way now to stop knight to g6. So very, very nice finish. The other win, just to point it out, is... Yeah. Um, maybe, I wish I found the other one because it's... It's pretty. It's pretty. Yeah, it's very pretty, yeah. Is knight here check. And now, of course, if the king goes to g8, we do yep. the same thing. Gary continues his journey to enlightenment, and he, he goes there, but... What happens if king h7? And this is something hopefully everyone in the chat will be able to work out. What yeah. should white do now? So, and, okay, yes, well done, 602. Yep. And uh, the simple move is to try to get the rook to this square because it will deliver checkmate. So well done to everyone who's found it. We can just go rook here, and whatever black plays, this is going to be checkmate next move. e5, rook g7, checkmate. So... Very nice, man. I think we should all give Bjorn a round of applause there um, <laughs> for for a, a very good game. So you can clap at home if you want to. We can't hear you, but let's at least say thank you to Bjorn for uh, for doing you know for for playing that uh, that that game. Very very nice. And uh, Bjorn, you played a good game there, mate. It was a good oh, game. thank you, thanks. Yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed it a lot. It was uh, yeah. It was a good game. Yeah, I mean, I think I mean you're you're only fifteen. For a 1500 player, bloody hell, Bjorn, you're gonna. I reckon you're gonna be 1800. You'll be 1800 in no time, no time at all. Oh, you think so? Yeah, yeah. well, hope, hopefully, hopefully. You just need to play more games, Bjorn, you know? Yeah, 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 that's true. And yeah. of course, you need to buy all the Ginger Jam DVDs because <laughs> exactly. that, that, well, that, yeah, yeah. that clearly has helped you become the player you are now. I mean, yeah. it's, it's hard not to win now. It's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but but that was that was a good game. You I mean you, you, you the thing I really liked about that is you assessed this position when you went into the calculation. So let's show could, that around could here. You put the, yeah. Could you put the position that we um, were analyzing, where people were kind of suggest uh, suggesting which side they wanted? Sure. Uh, could you put the line on the computer? You could do like evalu evaluation on maybe. Okay. Okay. So let's let's go to that. So the position that was key for this was this position here after yeah. Bjorn played bishop d3. And we this is a position, I think half the people in the chat were saying they like black and the other half like, like they like white. Black has basically a rook and three pawns. So two points up, yeah. Two points up if you're gonna count points. But white has all these ideas we're talking about. So let, let's whack it on the computer, see what it says Bjorn, yeah. Uh, analysis, okay, I'm just gonna have to resize the board uh, for everyone at home. So you can have a look at what the computer is suggesting and we'll see how the computer says that position. I assume it will like black. That doesn't yep. mean I agree with the computer. We can we can still disagree with computers. 
as I've talked about earlier. So we're going to go to the position. Now you can see the assessment. Um, well, let's make it big, shall we? We'll go over me and Bjorn's head. You've seen enough of us today. Um, <laughs> we're going to go to the position around about uh, here, bishop d3. So, well, it, 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 it does say it likes black quite a lot here. It thinks black is... 150, uh, yeah. 150, yeah. Yeah, interesting. And then, but then, uh, but when you look at the moves then, I yeah. mean, it's bishop e7 that I remember was the, yeah. the move. Uh, but he, even, if, even if we go... Because a, a, as soon as he doesn't go, go for the top moves, he loses yeah. a lot of these advantage. Yeah. Well, let's, let's, let's just play through, because the second move of the computer... Is bishop take? Oh, the, uh, is bishop takes a three, and it still thinks it's nearly a pawn up. So I'm just intrigued to see what it's suggesting here. Well, it gives rook to f eight. Yes, I know. But again, exactly. it, it goes down a lot. I mean, exactly. And you have to find, and this was my point. You have to find this, this perfect moves every time. Yeah. Otherwise, you're just losing. And and if you look at my moves, I have more than one move to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that keeps me in the game basically. Yeah. And look how look how it's dropped now, Bjorn. It's under it's under half a pawn now. So it really, mm. it really, you know, it's fine. I think the computers actually find this very hard to assess. I mean, it, it may well, it may well be better, um, black for black, but it's a practical game. And what people have got to like remember is that, you know, this is, this is not, you know, humans don't play like computers. And you can, you, you, what you should do often, especially if you're not like 2600 above, even at my, you know, my level, 2500 level, generally 2400 level. You can play ideas which a computer does not like because as long as you get the initiative or the easier position to play, you can be. I've had positions often where I know are like 1.5 down and I've gone mm. into them because I know that my opponent is a human and it's very hard mm. for him to find the right way. So don't get obsessed with computer assessment at home. Don't do it, you know. So, um, okay. Well, um, interesting game, Bjorn. And. Bloody hell, that was an hour and 50 minutes, yeah? <laughs> Can you believe well, it in that one game? So I think we'll just do, we'll go over some of the main points, first of all. Yep. I think you've saved, you've saved yourself from the ending I was talking about earlier, yeah? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's true. So that means, like, when I was cheat, me and Simon talked about going through uh, the, uh, the puzzles from yesterday. And I must admit, I was cheating a little bit but when you were online. I was like looking at some of the lines. <laughs> ah, cheeky! Ah, oh, cheeky! You were you were you were preparing yourself for the test. A little yeah? bit, a little bit, just a little bit, Simon. <laughs> just a little bit. You were cheating, basically. Okay. Well, I did a lesson yesterday. Anyone who missed it, and uh, we were looking at some deep end game ideas and i was going to test bjorn on it today but he's wriggled his way out of it by cheating and by spending too long on us analyzing this game so but i think the main points this lesson has been about one setup in this new opening which the ginger gm shop sells for 19.99 six hours of tuition on this system and the dvd i sell on the jabava london system you can play against anything in this game, we only looked at one of black setups. If you're used to playing the London system, I really, I really uh, suggest it because it takes some of these annoying lines uh, that you face in the London system. Uh, you just have an amazing response to basically. <laughs> I mean, this knight b5 move. I mean, this is the setup of the Jabava London system. Go to the Ginger yep. Gem shop if you want it, and, and you will have some quick wins with uh, with knight b5 in a lot of lines. Knight when... b5, yeah. This, so, this, this stuff. Sometimes. Black just plays uh, knight c6 without thinking and is almost losing. With this kind of stuff coming in. Often. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen a lot of games where um, knight c6 here's been played, yeah? And then knight b5 <laughs> is, is actually winning at least a pawn already, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Because you have to go e5. So this is yeah. probably winning the game already. You know, so yeah. it's, uh, yeah. Um, and the one thing I just wanted to talk about here is black went for c5 c5 now is a mistake because the knight b5 as we discussed and i think the one thing i want bjorn to take away maybe anyone who's trying to learn this opening is after a6 with the idea of going c5 very logical what should you do now white uh, as white here bjorn and i hope everyone at home's got this i'm going to repeat myself sometimes it's worth repeating to get the point across so bjorn what should white now play so play bishop d3 Bishop d3 to develop the bishop, line against here, control e4, and now if black continues with c5, 
what you do next and why. Give give me an explanation as well, Bjorn. You can explain things. Yeah, I would take the C pawn. Okay, why are you going to take the C pawn? Um. <sighs> yeah. No, sorry. Yeah, I will take it. Basic. One of the reasons is I don't want him to go C four, where he basically gets an advantage. Yeah. Good point. We don't... So I would take it and then develop more. Okay, so let's say you take it, and Bjorn's point out, if you don't take the pawn, then black can go c4, he moves your bishop away from this diagonal, forces it somewhere passive, so you yeah. should keep your bishop active, you should take on c5, and then what do you do next here, Bjorn? So develop, how do you develop here? I would develop for the knight to um, uh, f3. And this is a good, simple developing move, so let's say black castles. And I would castle here. Okay, and now let's play the most natural move for black. He develops his knight to c6, and this yeah. is the important point. What do you play and why, Bjorn? By the way, why are you saying that? The four symbols would point out that both Fabiano Caruana and Hikaru Nakamura played the Dutch opening as black, and they won both of their games in the US Championships. It's a great opening, the Dutch defence. My course oh, nice. in chess of ball is going to be coming out soon, so keep an eye on for that. Sorry, go on, Bjorn. I've got to put the sales pitch in occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> so basically here... You yeah. have to consider um, you're done with your development and you know that his bishop is really bad. So you need to play against that and you're happy with exchanging uh, other minor pieces. Um, and you're looking for a pawn break basically because you're you're done with all the development. So you need to look at how to, if you can play e4 or not. Uh, if you can't, you should prepare it. And if you can, just play it. Brilliant, brilliant expression. E4 is the pawn break to play to open up the center, open up some lines. If you really want to avoid the queen exchange, you can try queen e2 first, so your queen's not on that far, and you can bring a rook there. But I like the simple move e4. If black takes on e4, we keep our bishop, and when we go into a kind of ending like this, white has a nice advantage because this bishop can't move, meaning the rook can't move. And we can try to... What what do we try to do here for the ending, Bjorn? So even here, it's a kind of getting near the ending, but we can even think about our ideas in this position. How would we play this position as white? What's our main plan to do with our pawns here on the queen side? Okay, so the main plan is to push the, push the pawns on the queen side because you have a majority there. And I would also then look at if I could swap off... Maybe swap off um, a couple of more pieces like the... Like play bishop... Uh, bishop d5 would be a move just to swap off even more pieces before you start pushing the pawns. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that would be the general day. And and think of taking on c6 uh, to ruin his pawn structure. Yeah. So um, I think Steli, hello Steli, is saying if f6 to prepare e5, well now bishop d6 makes a lot more sense. And this gives us control of the open file. We're threatening to win a pawn, and we mm. just have a nice advantage in these positions. Okay, it's not winning, but it's better. It's better for white, and this has all come it's about. It's really hard, really hard to lose at least. <laughs> yes, you shouldn't lose this. Yeah. You, you should probably win these positions yeah. more than you draw them, actually. And this has all just come about from move five. <laughs> so this is an ending that comes about from putting the bishop here, and it shows you how you need to know plans in the mm. middle game ending from the opening. I think so. Yeah, well, Bjorn, we kind of come to the end now. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> have you got any last words, last questions? We we haven't got m much time to look at any more chess stuff, but anything you want to add at all? Uh, no. Uh, if there's anyone anyone on the stream in the Frederiksstad area, you should come to Frederiksstad today and play uh, uh, play at the Frederiksstad che Chess Club. But uh, other than that, no. I'm happy. <laughs> good. And good Good luck today, Bjorn, in your game. Yep. Yep. So um, I, I hope you have a good game and maybe we can look at it if we oh. have time next week or something. Yeah. So I had one thing. Maybe sure. Can I share messages in the stream? Uh, yeah, yeah, you can, you can put yeah, it. Yeah, I can. You can type. I'll, yeah. just, I'll just send uh, a link to some images from the Bunrati if, if anybody is interested. I'll definitely go back next year. Okay, um, and have you put them in now? Because um, oh, uh, oh yeah, yeah, there they are. Should be there. Yeah. Uh, okay, I'm going to have a look at those images there. So okay, yeah, good. There's, there's one of you there as well. Oh, there's a link <laughs> there. Yeah. Okay, good. I'll have I'll have a look at those images. Um, am I am I drinking a beer? Let me just have a little look. Probably. No water. Oh, wow. Are you good? Uh, that's uh, probably vodka. Probably. Oh, oh okay. No, uh, it, it looks like water for a change. It's not yours. 
No. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's it. Okay. <laughs> so thank you very much, Bjorn. I'll just close the show. I'll let you go in a second. And uh, thank you for getting the green screen. It looks really good now, this. And um, uh, do you think you'll be available next week, maybe? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll try to maybe do this again weekly now. I've got a bit of time and we'll try to help you improve, improve your chest. But big thank you to Bjorn. Um, I'll close your Skype down now, Bjorn, and we'll catch up yep. soon, yeah? So. Yep, will do. Okay, cheers Bjorn. Thanks mate. Cheers. So bye everyone. Bye. And a massive shout out to Bjorn there um for coming on the stream and I think that was quite educational. I hope uh, if you're trying to learn this opening the Jabava London system with this setup then um Bjorn has only just brought the DVD. He's practicing it and I know it's quite intense. It's quite hard work. It's not as fun maybe for some of you as the blitz chess we look at, but it will help you get better at chess and sometimes it's good to do something like that so a shout out to Bjorn everyone please say thank you to Bjorn um, and thank you to everyone who's joined into the stream here if you want to support the stream subscribe to the channel doesn't cost much if you want to do something that help your own chess check out the ginger gem shop maybe go and buy the Jabava London system it will help your chess go and look what other DVDs we have there to improve your chess they can only help, and it's a good way to support me doing these free streams and YouTube channel. I'm going to try to do another YouTube video very shortly. Um, I hope you're all good, and tomorrow we're going to have a crazy stream. So if that was too serious for you today, there you go. Thank you very much for subscribing, Ad, um, Ad V Net Soul. Very kind of you. But if you want a more crazy stream tomorrow, make sure you come along for the Simon and Blair show. I know I and no one you can never predict what's going to happen how crazy it's going to get how drunk we will be and it's really unpredictable so it's tomorrow and then obviously more stuff as you can see on the schedule and yeah Blair we're on live tomorrow uh, Stefan with Blair I don't know what to expect but it will be crazy so thank you all see you hopefully all tomorrow have a great rest of the day bye for now cheers bye mm -hmm.